Hi everyone, today I'd like to make a video on the different types of kittens that have appeared in the kitten play community in the last eight years. Um, as you guys know, kitten play has become quite a thing and we're growing as a community very rapidly and as such now there are different subsets within the community and different types of kittens. Um, out of this list I'm going to be giving you, you will probably relate to at least one of these and oftentimes you may well relate to more than one and in fact you can be more than one um, on this list. So let's get to the list of the different types of kittens that are currently in the uh, kitten play community. Shall we? So first we have uh, the most common and obvious which is the owned and an owned kitten is obviously a kitten that is collared uh, with a master, mistress or an owner um, and that is probably you know the most common type of kitten within the community and next you have the domestic uh, this is usually always a submissive uh, also owned domestics are affectionate they're usually trained or have gone through some kind of training with their owners. Uh, they usually have contracts and they're well known for just their general obedience and sweet, loving nature. Uh, next we have the feral. Feral kittens. I know a bunch of feral kittens. Feral kittens, the funny thing is, feral kittens can actually be owned like the domestic, uh, but feral kittens are not submissive. They're actually usually uh, quite bratty. Um, they tend to be fairly independent, even when they're owned, and oftentimes they can even be dominant and own kittens of their own while being feral. Um, they're difficult to train. Uh, you can often tell the owner who has a feral because you'll often see scratches on them or uh, bite marks. Uh, the next is the stray. Um, stray is a term in the kitten play community that applies to any girl um, who has recently been uncollared or released um, from a collar uh, and uh, once you're no longer in that relationship you automatically become a stray and even if you're not in any kind of relationship and you're looking for a relationship you're still actually classified in the community as a stray until you become collared. Uh, the next is the feline. The feline is a newer subset within the community. We're actually often not into um, the BDSM or fetish aspect, aspect whatsoever. Uh, they will wear the ears though. It's not like cosplay though, this is for more f high fashion. These are girls who will go out to the nightclubs in the metal ears, um, but still take the photos and post them on Instagram. Uh, next you have the cosplay kitten, and the cosplay kitten is the kind of kitten you're going to find at the conventions. Um, they're still wearing the ears, like the domestic would, um, but they're not usually oftentimes actually in the kitten play community because they're actually cosplaying a character who is a kitten from um, usually an anime or a manga. So yeah, that's the cosplay kitten. You know, often a lot of the photographs you'll see in the kitten play community directly come from cosplays like uh, Neko Paradise. Uh, next you have the pastel kittens and the kawaii kittens. This is probably the newest subset of kitten play and probably the most popular. Uh, these are the kittens you will find mostly on Instagram. That's the, the strongest part of the community right now. Um, and pastel kittens and kawaii kittens will wear the big sort of fluffy ears, a lot of the Japanese fashions, a lot of pink clothes or uh, new goth or pastel goth. So a lot of pale um, or bright colours and uh, they'll often have the septum piercing or dermal piercings um, and yeah a lot of a lot of that community on Instagram also it's very popular on Tumblr as well this is also probably the youngest subset of the kitten play community um, um, so yeah that's pastel kitten slash choir kittens um, and then you have uh, the Chateau Girls, which is a term for obviously models who uh, are part of the Chateau.org, or also known as the Cat Girl Manor. The style there is more elegant and refined, uh, a lot of lingerie modelling, very agent provocateur, and a lot of long gowns as well you see in that style of kitten play. Um, and elegant ears, again the metal ears are really favoured, metal collars as well you'll see. Um, it's also an older uh, part of the community because obviously all the models have to be legally 18 or older to even participate. Um, so yes, that's the chateau. And then finally you have uh, the tiska or um, maker. 
and uh, Tiska is Hungarian and uh, it means kitten in Hungarian and uh, Meka is Serbian and uh, it means a cat or older kitten and these are both terms within the chateau and the Tiska is usually a girl who's 18 to 25 and you can only become a Meka uh, when you've reached the age of 25 and it involves a test. It's similar to geisha culture in Japan where you have a meiko who is 15 to 20 and then a geisha and you can only become a geisha once you've completed five years of training. Um, likewise we have chateau finishing school um, and classes for etiquette in which girls uh, learn different courtesan like arts in terms of painting, musical instruments, uh, dancing, uh, poise and grace, so your classic, the book with the apple on the head, um, gait, so even how you walk, different things like that you can learn at the summer school, and then once you've completed it, um, then you get a ceremony once you're 25 and you become a maker. So yes, these are the different types of kittens currently in the kitten play community. It's really growing, I'm really happy for it, um, and I hope this video helps some of you guys because there is no real clear clarification on it right now. Um, and yeah, hopefully this helps. I will be making more videos, and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye.